Welcome to another episode of Rome's Cozy Kitchen. My, my, I'm Rome, and this is my backyard. This is not my home. The home is over there. Today, we're making hot dogs, all beef, all right? We're gonna be grinding the meat. We're gonna be putting the spices in. We're gonna be stuffing that thing and twisting that thing. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. And then, we're gonna be making the sauces to go along with it. We got some fried onion, sturdy onion sauce like that New York stuff, you know the vibes. This right here, whole grain mustard, whole grain mustard. We're gonna be doing that from top to bottom, all right? It's so beautiful outside, but we have to get inside to start making these, all right? I'll see you there. One of the most important things with making hot dogs is the crucial part is casing, right? I think that's gonna envelop the ground minced meat farce. Here, I have sheep casing. There's a variety of different casings you can use. You can use hog casings, it's a little bit more common, a little bit more malleable. Sheep casings would be like a close number second. Then there's lamb, if you're making like merguez and things like that. And there's also these guys. These are silicose. Uh, casing, so non-edible plastic casing. These are pretty much you can like make your sausage, stuff it the same way you, more or less you would with a animal casing. Parboil it, cool it down, cut the casing open and you will have like a naked hot dog pretty much, no animal casing. But uh, we're just using sheep casing. This one I have is pre-tubed and this right here can probably do about seven pounds of sausage. They usually come packed in salt. You usually have to rinse them with some warm water, like body temperature, warm uh, temperature water, and soak them, and soak them for about 45 minutes, or overnight in cold water. And now, I'm gonna let this soak 45 minutes, and we're gonna start grinding and seasoning this meat. So now we're gonna start cutting our meat, getting the whole sausage uh, process started. So the cut of meat that I'm using for these hot dogs are just some chuck, okay? Usually if you find whole chuck, the percentage equals out to 80, 20. That's what you want for this. You can get store pre-ground stuff, um, but if you have a attachment, do it, do it right, okay? So I'm gonna cut this into small chunks, chunks that I can fit my grinder attachment. And I'm gonna place it on this sheet tray right here, and we're gonna toss it in the freezer for about eight to 10 minutes, just to get it cold. We don't want it frozen or anything like that. Coldness is key right here. I also have the head of my kitchen aid in the freezer. I put that in there overnight. You don't want this fat to get warm at all and start to emulsify in a weird way. Okay, so little chunks like this on here. Did I mess up? No, I didn't. Okay, so we have this nice and cut. Beautiful meat, okay? And we're gonna just toss that in the freezer, like I said, eight to 10 minutes. And then we're ready to start making the sausage. It's gonna be, oh my God. A few minutes later. The meat is nice and cold. We're just gonna literally grind this into the bowl and then we're gonna season it right after and then do another grind. We got our meat uh, nice and ground. Look at the fat contents. This looks like it's evenly distributed. So right now, before we do that grind, like I said before, we're gonna add our spices. This is the key with uh, sausage making for me. Some people like to do it three times. For me, I don't wanna work the meat too much. So we got sugar, some onion and garlic powder, some sweet paprika, celery seeds. We got some nutmeg some red chili flake for spice, and marjoram. Can't do hot dogs without some marjoram. And about a teaspoon of salt. I go light on the salt, okay? Cause you can't go back, especially if you start wrapping these up. One of the secrets for me with making this is since we're gonna throw it in the grinder again, we just wanna mix the spices lightly. So I keep my fingers open and just coat the meat with the spices. That's what we're trying to do, okay? Not too crazy, no squeezing, because the warmth of our hands will make that fat melt even quicker. So we're just tossing, Woo. 
Now we're gonna do the second grind. We're gonna see, keep that same plate too. And look, we all, we all mess up. This is real life. It's a TV show, but it's real life. I forgot to put the cornstarch in that seasoning blend, okay? But luckily we have another step with these sausages. So I'm gonna add this to this bowl. We're gonna add our cornstarch directly to it. This is just gonna help bind that because we are gonna do a little squeezy squeeze lightly. And then I got some ice cold water. I'm gonna do a splash of that. And then we're gonna get our hands dirty again. We're gonna toss and then we're gonna squeeze slightly. Don't be me. All right, just put the cornstarch in with the seasoning. Let's do a few squeezes. And I didn't wanna do any of this squeezing both like during those two steps, all right? Cause you don't wanna overwork the meat. And look at that, all right? You want it to be slightly emulsify like this, okay? Might do one more splash of water. And I'm gonna toss this back in the fridge, set up this to be to the sausage stuffer, and then we'll start stuffing some sausage. Once you've seen sausage being made, all you wanna do is make sausage, because it's so much fun. There's a thrill to making sausage, right? You never know what's gonna happen. This is real life. If this tears, I do have some steps that you can follow to repair it, all right? But simple, we got this on. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is feed sausage in here without tying this off until you see a bit come out here. I'll show you why. So you get a little bit. And you stop it. And you want to stop once you see a little bit come out right there, okay? We'll, we'll see that. We'll pull this off. It looks so weird. Pull this down and then we'll tie this off. You pull it down, 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 down. Like Jay Sean. That's okay, you get a little leeway like that, all right? It's cozy. We just literally making sausages in the house. It's just so regular. What is this? We're making sausages. So now we start feeding it. Another thing is you always wanna have some meat here and just keep constantly feeding it. We're gonna put a little bit of pressure right here. This is awkward, I'm right-handed, but we'll make it work. And we just wanna feed, 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 feed. You can use your hand too. And putting that pressure on it, as you're pushing down, is just gonna make sure the meat and the sausage, like, it gets fully distributed. Woo. If that happens, that's okay. okay. This is very awkward for me right now. So we're gonna put some pressure there. And as it starts to get fat like that, you can start letting go and letting it droop down. But the amount of pressure that I put on here, you'll, you'll feel it extruding, if that makes sense. So the more pressure you put, the faster it'll come out. You see, I'm putting light pressure. We just wanna make sure the sausage comes out as even as possible. Like full and nice. And this little piece right here, don't worry. When we actually go to twist it, we can fix that. So. We got pretty much as much as much meat out of that as we can, all right? So we're gonna snip this off. But you're gonna wanna make sure before you snip it, you have a, a lot of room right here, okay? Because we're gonna tie that off too, right there. We're gonna pretty much do what we did at the end of that. Make a little knot. Now we got this butte right here. What we're gonna do is coil this up and throw it in the fridge. So we're coiling, we're coiling. Coil, coil, coil. Look at that. 15 minutes later. As you can see, we're roped up. Now we gotta get linked up. You can see that it's a little bit thinner right here. We're gonna pinch. We're gonna pinch, pinch, pinch. Right? That right there pushes all the meat 
to make it fatter and make it even. So how many inches would you say this is right here? I'm not sure, but you pretty much want to pinch here. Don't go too crazy because you don't want to, uh, you don't want to pop anything and you go forward like three times, nothing too crazy. Stop, grab this, pinch here. Make sure it's the same size, you can touch it like that. And then go backwards. This just helps seal it, okay? And then pretty much just gonna go throughout the whole link and do that. So here, you can see it's, div it's a little thin right there. I'm gonna pinch, push. Get it nice and even. And we're gonna go forward. You don't need to go crazy like three, four times. And then we'll just keep doing that. Pinch back. And before we get too crazy, we'll start to clip. Look at that. Beautiful. Hot, hot digga dog. One thing that people tend to do once they make these, they will want to grill it right away or cook it. But uh, it's best to let these sit in the fridge for a bit and dry out and just let all the flavors come together. Making mustard at home has never been easier. I'm gonna show you why and how. When you're making mustard, it's specifically whole grain mustard. There's two different seeds that you're gonna be using, right? You got your yellow mustard seed here and your brown and or dark mustard seed. Usually with yellow mustard seed, seed, uh, seeds, the, the flavor profile of this is a little bit uh, sweeter and milder in spice, okay? While like these darker ones are a bit more bitter and uh, way significantly more spicy. So pretty much what I did was combine these two, mix them, soak them overnight, and some apple cider vinegar, you can use white wine vinegar if you want, for like 12 hours. Pretty much they'll start to soften up. And this is the base of the mustard. This is the majority of the mustard right here. So we're gonna be making the mustard now. Fruit, very, look, easy. Definitely, definitely use a fruit processor for this if you have one. And while I'm making this, make sure to like and subscribe to Food52 so I can make ketchup next time, and, you know? So we're gonna start some of these mustard seeds right here on some of this brown sugar. I like my mustard to be balanced, all right? And very heavy on the horseradish. A little bit of this salt. Now we're gonna uh, blitz this. I'm gonna start on low, because it's safe. So we're gonna stop, we're gonna taste it. We're gonna look at consistency here. We want this to spread. This, this is what it's looking like now. You still got, this is whole grain mustard, okay? I would say definitely some salt. Horseradish is good. Maybe a splash more vinegar too. Amazing. And there we go, mustard, easy, simple. Now this, the flavors work better. You mix this and you sit this in the fridge for about like an hour. Let it chill, let it do its thing, okay? The next thing that we're gonna make is our fried dirty onion sauce. You heard me right, fried dirty onion sauce because these onions are dirty. The recipe for this is very reminiscent of the onions you would get in a street dog, right? So first thing you wanna do, get you a nice sized pot with some neutral oil. We're gonna turn that up high. Crucial part of this is the fried onion part, right? So you wanna get some color on there. You wanna make it a little nice, you know? We'll add our onions. Then we're gonna go in with the salt. Nice big pinch of salt. And we're gonna stir it. So you want that sizzle, okay? So you want that, you want that high, high heat, you know? Get that color. It starts to see a little bit right now.
we're gonna add the tomato paste. Everyone knows tomato paste, you wanna cook that out. So we'll add it, and it'll look like it's starting to stick, eh? But we're gonna pretty much deglaze with that red wine vinegar and um, water. So don't fret. And you really wanna work that tomato paste in with these onions. If you dig what I'm saying? I'm not gonna lie, I had it. I was in New York last June. I had a hot dog, a street dog. Sauce, perfect, all that stuff. The hot dog itself, I, it was like lackluster. It wasn't that, it wasn't that crazy. Okay, so look, we cooked that out. Nice fried tomato-y, jammy. Now we're gonna deglaze. Oh. And then we're just gonna scrape. Ooh. And we can lower that heat at this point. It's like medium low. And now we're gonna add some of these chili flakes. I like a little spice on mine. And definitely a cheat code would be frying these onions and like throwing probably like ketchup in it or something. But just, just do this, this is better. Okay, now we're gonna add some honey. A good amount. And our salt. We only seasoned it that one time, so. Look at this, I'm about to scoop it, scoop it up. This is the consistency I like. That's the vibe we're talking about. It's a sauce, okay? And when I do, I just go like this. I'll do a little bit more salt. And some more chili. You know what, we're gonna, we're gonna change this up a bit. I'll put a little onion and garlic powder in there. Just a little bit. And boom, there you have it. Fried, dirty onion sauce. This is definitely better served warm. Uh, so you can make this, you can throw it in your fridge, blase, blase. Um, but if you're gonna serve this on a hot dog or a burger or anything like that, definitely put it in a little pot, mm -hmm. heat it up, serve it warm, not piping hot. And now, look, so good. We made our sausages, we made all our condiments, and now it's time to cook these babies, okay? And uh, today I'm grilling inside my apartment in this grill pan. But you could definitely use these sausages outside. You know what I mean? It's about to be nice out, sun's out, thighs out, all that. If you're cooking them to temperature, so these are beef. I would say around 150, 160 should be good. I would do 150. Should be good. This pan is lightly oiled. I have my brush here with just some neutral oil. And I just brushed all the oil around. And I've been slowly heating it up, but you would want this on like me, like medium, medium, medium heat. You don't want to blast it. In this pan, these are gonna get some nice, beautiful grill marks. We love that. And we just let them cook. Three minutes aside or something like that. Also, another thing I didn't get into when I was coiling these and wrapping them up, there's a whole debate, right? To prick or, or not to prick. I don't prick them. I like to keep all that fat and the juices inside, but there's some people that swear by it. Their grandfather did it, grandma, uncle. Um, I don't prick, you know? But not pricking them, you can just feel like the juice in it, the, just the juiciness. You know what I mean, you just feel it. All right, so these is looking nice and good. Turn the heat off. Beautiful, spiceful, moist, not dry, right? The sheep, the, the casing, oh, a little, a little slight, little snap to it. This is amazing, the bun, the onion, I gotta eat the other, I gotta eat the other one. This is mustard. This is whole mustard, green mustard that we made. 
I soaked the seeds last night, man. It's real okay. This tastes so good. Oh my God. The mustard a little pop. My nose is sweating. I love that. Look at this. Together. I don't watch sports. I don't know. I don't know what sport is out right now, but get some hot dogs, all right? Even if there's no sports, get your family, get your family to go <laughs> and make these hot dogs, all right? If you want to see more lovely recipes, see my face with stuff with food, like and subscribe to Food52, all right? I love you. Mwah.